Uh, Ken Rolla is somebody who I've gotten the opportunity to interview on my broadcast. Uh, it's a cool thing to do a radio show because you get to have all these people on that you may have heard on other shows or you've read their articles and so on and so forth. And health is really one of my favorite topics, but he's not just a health researcher. He really has a lot more behind his information than your typical vitamin C is good, you know, you know, whatever the typical health stuff might be, because he really understands the eugenics campaign, or maybe it's better called a population control campaign, uh, and he truly understands, unfortunately, the evildoers, and more importantly, what to do about the scumbags. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ken Rolla from Fresh and Alive. Yes, as Bob mentioned, I've been a naughty boy for a long time. Back in the early 90s, I worked with free energy technology and had friends hurt and killed. And so I do know very well about the agendas. I've seen them up close. I've seen things that people wouldn't believe. And so I got into natural health about 25 years ago because I needed to heal myself. And because of my background in electrical engineering and because of my interest in quantum physics and free energy and advanced technologies, I saw things in healing that other people weren't seeing. And so I have been teaching about that ever since and showing advanced methods for healing. And as it turns out nowadays, uh, we've got a lot of things that are threatening our health that most people aren't aware of, like nuclear fallout or genetically engineered microbes, bio-warfare agents, nanotechnology, geoengineering pollutants. Most of you are probably familiar with that, uh, spraying heavy metals in the atmosphere, but also desiccated human blood cells full of genetically engineered microbes. There's no way you can justify that as weather control. It's definitely a population control agenda. And then genetically engineered organisms, GMO food. It, it boggles my mind at how many people are not aware of the damage that genetically engineered food causes to the body and what to do about it. There are actually ways to revert GMO DNA back to the original heirloom. And the reason is, is because the pattern, the genetic pattern is not in the DNA. The DNA is a, the carrier of the genetic pattern, but it is not the pattern. The pattern is in consciousness itself. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how this stuff works and practical things that you can do to keep yourself happy and healthy and keep these biowarfare agents out of your body, neutralize radioactivity in the atmosphere, in your yard, on your garden, and in your body, how to get these nuclear particles out and neutralize them within the body, really inexpensively too. This is gonna take every bit of 90 minutes. This is usually a, 20, a two hour to three hour presentation. So I'm gonna be zooming through this. And I know, I don't wanna miss Jordan Maxwell or Bob Tuscan or any other folks. So I'm gonna do my best to get this done as fast as possible. And I don't expect you to be able to take notes at the rate that I'm gonna be going. Therefore, I have made these slides available and other notes on my website. And I would highly recommend you write that URL down, downloads.freshandalive.com. You can download these uh, and you can look at them in detail, including a lot of other information there, including uh, instructions on how to make your own supplements and medicines and heal yourself, okay? So be sure to write that down because uh, it'll, I'll be showing this at the end of the presentation, this URL as well, uh, but I obviously won't have time for questions in this format. So back in, um, now first of all, I'm gonna, with this kind of a crowd, the, the first few slides I'm gonna really zoom through because with this kind of crowd, you guys, I think most of you already know that geoengineering, spraying heavy metals in the atmosphere is a problem. I think you guys know. I see lots and lots of people stating the problem, but they don't state the solution. I like to focus on the solution. So I'm gonna zoom through the problem because I don't have to convince you guys that this is going on so much. You know, some crowds, I really have to show the evidence, the patents and all the things on geoengineering to show people that this is really going on. But it's not at all a conspiracy theory. Dr. David Keith from Harvard University, he's the Gordon McKay Professor of Applied Physics at Harvard. He's also the 2009 Time Magazine Hero of the Environment recipient for developing a company that sprays heavy metals into the atmosphere globally to the tune of 20, 10 to 20 million metric tons every year. 
So this, uh, this guy has been on the Colbert Report. He's been all over mainstream television. He's been out in the media promoting this idea that, oh my gosh, we've got global warming and climate change. And the, the only thing that we know how to do is spray metals up in the atmosphere to reflect the heat back from the sun and cool the planet down. It's utter nonsense. There, and as he states and other geoengineers state, they got the idea for doing this from observing what happens when volcanoes, there we go, when volcanoes go blow. When volcanoes blow, they shoot up a large amount of ash into the atmosphere and it spreads out for thousands of miles and it cools the, the earth. It acts as a, a shield and it reflects sunlight and it cools the earth down about one degree. Now the great thing about volcanoes is they remineralize the earth. And so it's a very, very beneficial part of the ecosystem, the earth. Volcanoes going off remineralizes the earth and not just with regular old macro minerals that we're familiar with, but also superconducting minerals that are extremely healing and regenerative to all living organisms. And we're gonna be talking about those. So anyway, the good news is it's illegal to be spraying us. <clears throat> the 1998 National Defense Authorization Act Public Law 10585 specifically prohibits the use of human subjects for testing of chemical and biological agents. That's the good news. The bad news is there are exceptions. And the exceptions are any peaceful purpose that's related to a medical, therapeutic, pharmaceutical, agricultural, industrial, or research activity, any purpose that's directly related to protection against toxic chemicals or biological weapons and agents, and any law enforcement purpose, including any purpose related to riot control. So basically, the government can spray us, but we can't spray ourselves. <laughs> like how that works. Uh, there's a really good uh, YouTube video that was on the Discovery Channel or the History Channel called Declassified Human Experimentation, because very often I get the question, well, why would they be spraying us with this toxic stuff? If they're spraying it everywhere, it's affecting them. Why would they do it? I just can't believe the government would spray us. The government has a long, long history of doing a lot of really stupid, toxic things to populations. Uh, they're not the brightest people. I used to work with the North Carolina Hospital Association with lobbyists, and I can tell you, man, politicians, majority of them are just brain dead. I mean, they're corrupt. A lot of them are extremely dumb, and they're in it for the power and the money. And so, no, they're not thinking. They also aren't informed. A lot of times these politicians are going on, you know, summaries that they're getting from the military or whoever, and also the military leaders that are doing this stuff. They all have agendas. They all have awareness. And, you know, I mean, if you're in an organization that essentially its motive is to kill people, you know, how aware are you going to be? So... There is a long history of this, and um, it's not at all a conspiracy. There are a couple of movies that cover this very well in detail. Uh, what in the world are they spraying, and why in the world are they spraying? I just met with Michael Murphy, who helped produce these movies out in Los Angeles, and these people, man, they are really, really sacrificing to get this information out, working hard and being attacked. He's had several attempts on his life. I've had uh, death threats for some of the technologies I've developed to help humanity. Um, so, some of the effects of geoengineering. Now, they're spraying aluminum powders, barium, and strontium. And these metals, first of all, they do reflect sunlight. They also filter out certain frequencies of cosmic radiation, also known as scalar energy or the other names for it, tachyon energy, zero-point energy this faster than light, this superluminal light that's coming down to the earth that's awakening humanity, these metals filter out specific frequencies to suppress the awareness and expansion of consciousness. So that's one of the things, as, along with obviously filtering out sunlight. There are other agendas though. Uh, when aluminum comes down onto the soil, it alters the pH of the soil and it blocks nutrient uptake in plants. Fortunately, Monsanto has a whole lot of genetically engineered crops ready to go that are very aluminum resistant, so we don't have to worry. We'll have a whole slew of GMO crops that we can eat. But the aluminum blocks the nutrient uptake. It also is a fire accelerant, so when it comes down on lands everywhere and it lands on forests and trees and plants, they burn up a lot quicker if there's a forest fire. And that's exactly what's been going on. If you look at all these fires they've had on California over the last few years, the firefighters will tell you, man, these fires are going up like crazy, much, much faster, much worse. And it's because 
you've got aluminum all over these plants. Aluminum is put into fireworks as, a, as it's what makes them burn and explode. And of course, aluminum also gets into living organisms and it, in the human body and in animals, it interferes with the brain and nervous system. These metals get into the nervous system, into the brain neural pathways, and they block neural receptors, they block neural firing, and you get all sorts of neuromuscular diseases. And so a lot of times, for example, like autism. Autism is usually caused by metals, mercury, and aluminum getting to the brain and short-circuiting neural pathways, and you get these neuromuscular disorders. And you can actually heal it completely by pulling these metals out. I've done it many times with autism, with MS, MD, Parkinson's disease. All these neuromuscular disorders can be healed. If you understand how to detoxify the body, how to pull these metals out and regenerate cells. Now, another interesting agenda with all of this is making money, of course. There's always a profit motive behind these, these types of things. And in the case of geoengineering, um, you can actually speculate now on, on the weather and make money from it. On the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, you can actually buy weather futures. And so the agricultural companies know this, and they are investing heavily in weather futures and betting against their own crops. So they actually make more money if, if their crops fail than if they, if they don't. So they have no incentive whatsoever to produce uh, healthy, good crops. They win either way. There are obviously military and political agendas. There is a paper I'm going to show you in a moment from the Air Force where they explicitly state that they want to control the weather globally by 2025. If you can control the weather of a country, you can blackmail countries into your political agendas. You can cut off their water. You can cut off their rain. You can destroy their crops. You can make their people rebel and overthrow governments. There's a lot of agendas involved in this. Now, these I'm going to go over very quickly, just to show you this is not, again, a conspiracy theory. I think most of you don't need much convincing, but um, the American Meteorological Society uh, did a research paper called Indirect and Semi-Direct Aerosol Campaigns, and they had, I think, about 26 research scientists involved in this paper. These are 13 of them right here. There's the other 13. Our good old friends at the Council on Foreign Relations had a workshop uh, a couple years back on geoengineering, and the workshop was on unitary planetary, unilateral planetary scale geoengineering. So the powers that be know very well about this. They're having meetings about it. Governments are having meetings about this stuff. They're discussing it, what to do, how to do it. Now, <clears throat> the journal Science, the world's leading journal of original scientific research and global news and commentary. It's a very trusted physics journal. They've got articles on geoengineering, the politics of geoengineering, tests for geoengineering, shifting the debate on geoengineering because obviously it's insane to be spraying toxic metals in the atmosphere. David Keith, it's amazing, he's on public television telling people we've got to spray hydrosol sulfuric acid in the environment, in the atmosphere, to get rid of acid rain. How does that work? You know, I was taught in engineering school, it's like to, dissolve, to neutralize an acid, you have to get a base and mix with it. So I don't think adding acid to the atmosphere is going to neutralize acid rain. It's insane. And of course, the reason this is is because these people are lying. You know, they're lying about what's really going on, what the motives are, and what the purposes are. The Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Program by the U.S. Department of Energy has an article on their website, and all this is public. It's not hidden behind passwords or anything, logins. Indirect and semi-direct aerosol campaigns. There's the Air Force paper in commission in 1996, and it explicitly states the motives for controlling the weather globally by 2025. Weather as a force multiplier, owning of the weather in 2025. And you can download this. Just Google that. Google owning the weather in 2025. You can go straight to it and download it. It's right on their website. They're having conferences about geoengineering. And geoengineering is the politically correct term for this because if you use the word chemtrails, you're going to be labeled as a quack by the mainstream scientific community. UNESCO has information on their website. There are tons of patents. There are hundreds of patents, 320 plus 
on geoengineeringwatch.org alone for this technology. Obviously, if this is not a conspiracy theory, there has to be a real world paper trail. And even with military projects, even if the patents go uh, subvert, they still have to be listed in various places. So you can follow this paper trail. There are hundreds of patents. Some of them explicitly state what they're for. Some of them explicitly state, you know, for global weather control. There are search terms you can search on. We won't go over these. You can just download these slides and check out the search terms. The UK House of Commons uh, has a paper on their website for the regulation of geoengineering. And in that paper, they note the need for regulation. They also note the need to collaborate with the US Congress. So US Congress and UK legislatures, the, the parliament, they all know about this stuff. Not the entire Congress necessarily, but they've got committees who are working with this stuff. And they know about it. Uh, it's not like they're clueless. Now here's an interesting one. The Rothschild owned defense contractor Raytheon does all forecast modeling for the National Weather Service and NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Lockheed Martin does the modeling for the FAA. Federal Aviation Administration. Since both of these private defense contractors are up to their necks in weather modification patents and programs, the forecasts are more or less scheduled weather. Also, E.L. Rothschild, a private investment company, owns a 70% interest in Weather Central, the world's leading provider of interactive weather graphics and data services for television, web, and mobile. So you're not getting the truth about what's really going on in the atmosphere or with the weather. There's a Nobel Prize issued to Mario, to Paul Crutzen and, and Mario Molina for the ozone layer, the Achilles heel, the biosphere. So again, this stuff is being studied all over the place. There are lots of scientists that know about this stuff. This is an aerial photograph of the southeastern United States. And uh, because one of the arguments that these geoengineers will make that there's no conspiracy and that there's you know, there's no geoengineering going on, or is they'll say, well, you know, these are just contrails. Well, these are aircraft patterns from, quote, contrails over the southeast United States. And if these airlines are flying these traffic patterns, they're going to go broke really fast. Going back and forth, backing forth in a grid pattern, you know, first of all, you have a lot of pissed off customers. It's like, where the hell am I at? <laughs> and then you're not going to make any money. Uh, we'll, we'll slide over these. You, you guys can check out these. These are various links to people who are studying this stuff scientifically. I've got a ton of this kind of information on my website at radiationlinks.freshandalive.com. Morgellons disease is related to this. Some of these biowarfare agents that they're spraying. Morgellons disease is this really gruesome disease where you develop lesions on the sur surface of your skin and you, they, you grow these fibers, these fibers grow out of you that nobody can identify, or at least doctors who are using conventional medicine can't identify, because they're created by what's called a cross-domain organism, cross between a bacteria and a fungus. And they create these really weird, weird fibers that look like fishing string that will grow out of the surface of the skin. And typically it comes with people who have a diet that will feed them, which is a diet high in acids and starches and processed foods and things like that, rather than a living foods diet high in chlorophyll and juices and fresh food. These GMO fibers are also found in our food supply, even organic food, even biodynamic food. If you're growing outdoors, you most likely have these fibers in your food. And we most likely have these in our bodies, depending on what we're doing. The good news is you can get rid of them, and that's what I'm going to be showing you. But this stuff is all is global. It's everywhere. It's not just the United States, although we are pretty we are one of the more heavily chemtrail countries. These are fibers in pig lungs and also in rhododendron. These are these are Morgellons fibers, and this was the least gruesome Morgellons example I could find online. You, usually they're really horrific. They look awful sores and lesions all over a person's body and these, these fibers growing out. Um, but this is what it looks like in a very, very mild case. And this can be healed. I've helped people heal Morgellons disease. Uh, using pathogens like this is nothing new. It's been actually been around for thousands of years. Even the ancients tried to hurt each other and battle with bacteria and 
things like that. The Japanese in World War II um, used the Lyme disease spirochete for biowarfare. There's a book called uh, Spirochete Warfare by Elena Cook if you want to see information on that. Now, as I said, I like to focus on the solutions, so we're going to get to the solutions. How do you get this out of living organisms? Now, first of all, I have to tell you, I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. I'm not any kind of licensed healthcare professional of any kind. I'm just a guy who's figured a few things out and done it for myself. So I'm sharing with you information and opinions of my own. Do not construe this as medical advice or health advice of any kind. In fact, I highly recommend you don't take any of my advice. I highly recommend that you use a licensed healthcare professional and do everything that the FDA would like you to do so that they'll be happy. All right? So, I, I have another presentation and I also do classes on how to get into the, all the details of how to do this in the body. We're just going to go over the basic concepts. And the first thing with any kind of a health issue always is to, health, uh, is to test and evaluate your health status. So there are kind of tests that I know of that you can do that will identify biowarfare agents, it will identify radioactivity in the body, it will identify GMOs, it will identify EMF damage, and all sorts of things. So I use uh, out of the ordinary biological testing along with conventional medical testing sometimes. I used to work in a medical pathology lab doing the testing in hospitals, so I know that most of that testing for these kinds of things is not very effective. Um, but there are methods, and I will get into the specific, specifics of it, uh, unfortunately not into a lot of the specifics of it in this presentation, but I do have it in others. And if you go to that downloads page, you can see the specifics. Um, so you get testing. I like using a device called a QXCI SCIO or Indigo. That is a quantum biofeedback device, and it can identify all these things in the body. But it can also send energy back into the body. And interestingly, interestingly enough, I discovered oh, a little over a year ago that it will neutralize radioactivity in the body as well. Now, um, I've, been, I've had uh, radiation poisoning three times now, and I've had biowarfare agents in me four times. A lot of people get contaminated by this stuff and they get very sick, but they don't know what it is. And then it passes and they think, oh well, you know, I just had a really bad flu bug or food poisoning or something, when in fact they've had radiation poisoning or one of these biowarfare bugs in them. I know how to identify them and so I test whenever I get sick and a lot of times, I, I'm testing all the time anyway because I'm testing supplements and various therapies and things all the time, so I see what's going on in my body and I test other people. But uh, I'm never going to volunteer for radiation poisoning, so spirit just kind of throws it at me and makes me deal with it. And when I figure it out, then I share it with people. And so that's what happened. I got radiation poisoning uh, from food. Uh, every time it was from food. It wasn't any kind of a conspiracy. Nobody was trying to kill me. Uh, not that some people would like to. But uh, I, so I got it on my food. My wife, we had a really big salad. We grow most of our own food, but we had some from the health food store. She didn't get sick at all. I got really sick. And uh, first time around, it took me about 10 days to get rid of it. Um, and then several months later, maybe six months later, I got it again, and it took me about five days to get rid of it. And then uh, maybe six weeks ago, I got poisoning again, and it took me about 36 hours to get over it. So I've learned and figured out how to deal with this stuff. Um, and that's what I'm sharing with you guys. So the Saskio can actually neutralize radioactivity in the body. We have some really cool supplements I'm gonna be showing you that can pull it out and neutralize it within the body, and also these biowarfare bugs and this nanotechnology. So once you get testing, then you need to do internal cleansing. And I always, you know, if you're, if you're in dire straits and you're really sick at the moment, then you've got to do what you've got to do to heal the problem of the moment. But in general, everybody should be ingesting things that are detoxing them on a daily basis, and then they should be doing periodic cleansing at least a couple of times a year, doing some comprehensive cleansing to really pull this stuff out of your body. And, you know, even before all these insane biowarfare agents and stuff, this is a good idea anyway, just from chemical farming. You also, these days, because we've got nuclear fallout coming down, and by the way, in Pennsylvania, you guys have some of the highest rates of nuclear fallout coming down on you. 
Uh, there have been studies done in Pennsylvania on your water supply, and you've got high levels of cesium, and you've got increased mortality rates here that's been verified by mainstream scientists uh, that's increasing your mortality rate. So you guys really need to be protecting yourself against this fallout, and, and you're, you're protecting yourself and detoxing from what's in your food and your water. Um, but along with internal cleansing, you've got to do external cleansing. So if you get out in the rain, you better get yourself washed off when you get inside and dried off because this stuff is coming down in the rain. And you can measure it with a Geiger counter. You don't have to take my uh, word for it. You know, you can buy a good Geiger counter for around $600. And you can test this stuff yourself. You can take swipes from cars after rain and things like that. You can take the dust from the intakes of your air conditioning and you, you can check it. Very often it's radioactive. Um, so zeolites, there is uh, an extrinsic zeolite powder you can get. You can throw it in your wash. You can take baths with it, and you can clean this stuff off the surface of your body. There are also other, uh, other things. There's something called microblast, which was originally developed for agriculture that's really good for breaking these things down. Biowash, you can use these in your, in your environment. Uh, also, a soap called Miracle 2 soap is very good for getting this stuff off your body. Then, when you're not in dire straits, just on a daily basis, you've got to build your immune system and neutrify your body and alkalize your body while you're detoxing. So every day I take nutrient tonics that are also detoxifiers, and they've got in them vitamins, minerals, probiotics, enzymes, and then specific detoxifiers like zeolites, nano zeolites, that can get these, these metals and these toxins and these agents out of the brain and out of all the cells in the body. Hydration is also very, very important because basically as long as you can poop and pee, you can heal just about anything. Uh, and so getting fluids going through you and running it through the cells, running it through the body, that's a major, major thing for keeping healthy and, and detox. So drinking lots of water and fresh juices, organic juices, not GMO juices, obviously. You know, everybody wants to be doing at least organic food. And organic food, I can tell you, is not even... It's not even up to par for the most part. Unless you're getting it from a local farmer, most of the organic food that's being sold, it's picked early, it's not allowed to ripen, and it doesn't have the nutrient levels. It's also grown a lot of times in depleted soils. You can use a device called a BRICS meter, B-R-I-X, to check the nutrient levels in your food and your produce, and you can see this for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Now, <clears throat> there are some really, really cool supplements that have come out that we can use to protect ourselves. And we always will have solutions for this stuff because the one gigantic, big, fat, stinking trump card that we have, that the powers that be don't want us to know that we have, is that consciousness creates reality. And so when you look at the physics of how consciousness creates reality, this is not some metaphysical metaphor. There are physical mechanisms for this happening. And when you understand those mechanisms, the energy that creates these problems, that creates the consciousness that develops these problems, the opposite polarities of those energies are also simultaneously create the solutions always, always, forever and ever, 2,000 years ago, today, 100 years from now. It's like whatever crazy crap that these insane people come up with, there will always be solutions for them. Because consciousness creates reality, there are already people on this planet that have solutions for all this stuff. I'm one of them, but there are many, many others. And so all you have to do when you understand that is seek them out, seek out the solutions. What most people do when they find out about this stuff is they get depressed and they get in victimhood because that's how they've been programmed to be, or I should say mind controlled to be. And they go, oh, woe is me, gosh, it's horrible, I wish I could do something. Well, you can, if you truly get that you create your reality, then you never get into victimhood and you just search for the answers and you find them. So with that said, there is a whole new class of supplements that are coming out that are really cool. I call them Ormus homeopathics. And they are waters that have monoatomic minerals in them that are programmed with frequencies. Now, what does that mean? And by the way, uh, we've got some folks right across from my table outside there selling Ormus products. I highly recommend you check them out and listen to some of the stories that they tell because this is one of our silver bullets for these kinds of crazy toxins that are coming out. But 
ORMIS is just an acronym, Orbitally Rearranged Monoatomic Elements. And that just means there are certain minerals or certain elements on the periodic chart. The platinum group for you geeks, it's the platinum group metals, gold, silver, mercury, copper. They normally exist as metals and what makes them look and appear like metals being silvery and or shiny and solid metallic looking is that their atoms are bound together in some kind of three-dimensional grid. And that three-dimensional grid gives them their appearance. Well, you can run them through certain processes like photosynthesis, like fermentation, like vortexing them in water in magnetic fields, and you can break them down into individual atoms. And when you break them down into individual atoms, they no longer appear to be metals. They look like white ceramic powders. These are, there are many legends and stories about this throughout time about white powder of gold and lip manna and things like this. And this is what this stuff is. You can make it yourself. Nature makes it all the time. It's made naturally in plants and animals ingest them. So if you've got these platinum group metals and gold and silver and mercury and copper in your soil, microbes will eat them and break them down into these monoatomics and plants will then uptake them. So if you're living like I am in Florida where you don't have a lot of these minerals in the soil, you can use volcanic rock powders to feed the soil and these plants can uptake them. And that's exactly what I do. And I've been working with people that are growing food with monoatomics of various kinds and getting insane amounts of growth. For example, tomato plants in, in Texas. Texas soil is very rich in minerals, especially these ornamental minerals, but it's not bioavailable. Well, this company developed a product, which I can't tell you, unfortunately, because they've had attempts on their life. But I will tell you about it in, this, in these slides. I'm just gonna, not going to tell you which one it is. So if you use these, these supplements in these slides, you'll, you'll bump into it. But they put this stuff on soil in Texas at, on tomato farms, and they wound up getting 15-foot-high tomato plants with three to 4,000 nutrient-dense tomatoes per vine. So the, the argument that organics can't feed the world is a bunch of nonsense, particularly when you know about Ormus. And uh, these Ormus supplements that are being sold outside, you can use them for growing food. And I do this routinely. You know, I, I sprout and I have hydroponic uh, tower gardens at my house that I grow food with and I also grow out in the soil and all of it gets fed Ormus, all of it. When you see, for example, in Hawaii, you see seeds growing into plants and trees directly off of lava rock. There's no soil there. How is it that they do that? It's these superconducting minerals. They are very high in lava and organic, excuse me, volcanic rock. So volcanic rock powders, volcanic ash, they're extremely high in these very rejuvenative, regenerative mineral powders. And you can buy them really cheap and you can put them on your soil. You can feed them to plants. You can put them in ferments and you can feed them to yourself. It's one of the things I have on that downloads page are instructions on how to make your own probiotic and you can throw rock powders into it and make your own Ormus medicines which you can then heal yourself with. So anyway, this class of supplements, these Ormus homeopathics, they've got these superconducting minerals in them and they act, these, these minerals act like antennas for this faster than light subtle energy that's around us all the time. Scientists now are calling it skater energy, it's gone by many other names. Chi, prana, life force, orgone, tachyon energy, zero point energy, whatever you want to call it, it's superluminal light that's zooming through the cosmos all the time. And it passes through the particles of matter um, and it's around us all the time. It's like the force in Star Wars. And you can use it, you can grab it and tap it and do things with it, including healing or restructuring matter and restructuring electromagnetic magnetic radiation. Human cells do this naturally all the time in the body using these enormous elements. So it's been discovered that you can take water and put these superconducting minerals in them and program them with scalar energy of certain frequencies and they will then radiate out those frequencies. And those frequencies, because they're, they're scalar waves and scalar waves create matter, this whole three-dimensional universe that we're in is created from this scalar energy zipping through the cosmos, slowing down and turning into this 3D reality. I'm going to show you more evidence of this in a minute. So you can, t since it can modify matter and electromagnetic energy, you can program these waters with these monoatomic minerals. And in this case, this rad detox, you, we, they've been programmed with all the anti-frequencies of all known radioactive elements. So when you ingest it, it neutralizes radioactivity in the body. It literally alters the matter in your body and neutralizes radioactivity. 
It also is very, very good for protection against EMF. Uh, I am fortunate, I live out in the country on five acres and I don't have any wireless technology around me. But even just the wiring and stuff like that and even radar guns from airports and stuff, we all get dosed with it. And so once I started taking this and I was getting these skio sessions, um, I wasn't surprised, but the skio practitioner was very surprised to see how low my EMF levels were uh, after taking this stuff. So this is some really phenomenal stuff. Nano zeolites are also one that everyone should be taking every day. Nano zeolites are different than powdered zeolites, micronized zeolites, rock powders. These are broken up. The zeolites are a mineral that's formed when hot lava hits ocean water or underground water. And when it does that, it shocks it and it creates this, these little geodesic domes, these little atomic scale geodesic domes. And those geodesic domes have a very strong negative charge in them. So when you ingest them, they will go into the body and they will latch on to any positively charged particles in the body. Now it just so happens that pathogens and parasites and free radicals have a positive charge in the body. And so they go into the body and because they're nanoscale, they're actually small enough, they can go anywhere in the body that water can go. They can go into the brain and they can pull heavy metals out of the brain or the anywhere in the body. They can pull out these radioactive elements. They can pull out pathogens and toxins of all kinds, heavy metals. And so this is one I take every day. I take the advanced TRS on the left. That's a little bit better than the one on the right, the ACZ nano zeolites. But these are both really phenomenal products. They're not cheap. They're about, I think the, the advanced TRS is like $68 a bottle. And it'll last typically a few months. You only take a tiny amount of this stuff too. Uh, I learned a long time ago, by the way, and this is a little warning, don't overdo zeolites. Take, you know, when you start taking them, take maybe a little bit below the recommended dose and work your way up to the recommended dose. Don't go over the recommended doses because these things can dehydrate the body and they can cause heart arrhythmias and things like that. I was, years ago, I was doing zeolites and I thought it would be really gung-ho and do big doses and I almost had a heart attack. So don't overdo it on the zeolites. Now another really cool one is, of course, we've probably a lot of you have heard that we need to be taking an iodine to feed the thyroid. Radioactive elements like cesium and radioactive iodine, uh, they will get loaded into the thyroid and then cause thyroid cancer and other problems. Now, lots of other problems well before you ever get cancer. When you see people with thinning hair, particularly women, and uh, just tons and tons of issues come from thyroid problems. Um, Feeding the thyroid is one thing that needs to be done, but you also have to detoxify the thyroid and heal the thyroid. If it's latched onto radioactive particles, you may not know it and you wind up with cancer you know, years down the road. Uh, so it's not enough just to feed the thyroid with iodine, but you also need to detoxify and heal it with herbs. So anyway, there's a, a monoatomic iodine is the kind of iodine that I prefer uh, because it's 100% metabolized and it's extremely regenerative to the body. It's very detoxifying to the body too. It's not just a mineral for the, for the thyroid. It really detoxes you. Uh, the iodine that you want to get is called nascent iodine. And uh, these particular brands, the one on the left is superior to any others I know of because it's monoatomic iodine and it's been programmed with the anti-frequencies of all known radioactive elements. So not only does it feed the thyroid and detoxify the body, but it also neutralizes radioactivity in the body, which I think is really cool. So I take that stuff every day. Uh, there's also a less expensive one called um, Detoxidine or Detoxidine from GHC Health, and that's another one that I like. Uh, I don't have time for any questions. You can ask me questions at my booth after my talk. Now, liposomal vitamin C has been proven in Fukushima and in Chernobyl to be extremely effective at removing radiation from the body. Uh, so this is a little bit different than regular vitamin C supplements sold on the market. It's been bound. bound the vitamin C has been bonded to uh, lipids and it's uh, complete, completely metabolized by the body. Apple pectin powder, also a really great one. Apple pectin has been proven in Fukushima to be extremely effective at pulling radiation out of the body and it's ridiculously cheap. It used to be a lot cheaper until I started recommending it. Now I've noticed these people have jacked the price up on it, but it's about 16 bucks a pound now. So I buy like five pound bags of this and I put it in a, in a, a drink or a juice every day. Charcoal, food grade activated charcoal is also a really good one. 
the, what are known as the transuranic elements, the radioactive elements from uranium on up on the periodic chart, they are large enough that zeolites can't pull them out of the body. So you've got to use, but they also don't get into the brain and other parts of the body because they're so large. So you can pull them out of the GI tract with charcoal and also with clays. Uh, I like sacred clay because not only um, it's like moronite clay and it will pull toxins and heavy metals out of the gut, but it will also, it has ormus in it, so you're getting ormus with it as well. Uh, also, more commonly available ones, uh, Sunny 7, which is available in most health food stores, that's bentonite clay and moronite clay. Those clays are also extremely good at pulling this stuff out of the gut. Diatomaceous earth is fine, but these work better, so I prefer them. Uh, you can make your own powder mixture of all of these to remove this stuff out of your gut and take it on a daily basis. And again, I re highly recommend doing this on a daily basis. I just don't throw it in a smoothie because this stuff will, if you mix it with fruit, it'll ferment in your gut and feed pathogens, so you don't want to do that. But you can put it in a green drink or water or whatever. I just make a cocktail of stuff and I throw in algae and various things. And, and uh, I vortex mine in a device called a water vitalizer. And this is not in your slides if you want to write this down, but there's a device called a water vitalizer that will vortex water in a magnetic field, in a strong magnetic field, and that creates ormus. So if you throw supplements in, into it in the water, it will bring the ormus out, make it more bioavailable if there's any in there. Um, and it also makes minerals much more bioavailable. Now, this is our silver bullet for these pathogens, whether it's Morgellons pathogens or biowarfare agents or whatever. And if you Google this, you're gonna see a lot of FDA warning letters, which should be a sign to you that it's really good. <laughs> Chlorine dioxide. This was developed, or I should say it was rediscovered by a man named uh, Jim Humble, who was in Africa working on large water projects, municipal water projects out in the middle of nowhere hundreds of miles from civilization, or what we call civilization, and uh, he and his crew came down with malaria. And they got it so bad that they were in danger of dying from it, and all they had on hand were some water treatment chemicals. So they mixed them up with a little water and drank it down, and lo and behold, they got rid of malaria in four hours. Now, I don't know if you guys know how difficult malaria is to get rid of with conventional medicine, but I had a friend that got malaria in India, and it took him a year to get rid of it and it ruined his health along the way because he was taking so many antibiotics. This stuff is amazing. It is bleach, so if anybody says, well, that stuff's toxic, it's bleach. Yes, it is bleach. It's not like Clorox, but it smells and looks like Clorox. But when you put it, uh, just a few drops, into water or juice, and you ingest it, it's converted in the GI tract into massive amounts of oxygen. And oxygen is one of the ways that you kill these pathogens. They are generally anaerobic, and so if you surround them with oxygen, they die off. There, there are multiple ways to target pathogens, and specifically just pathogens. One is to surround them with oxygen. One is to destroy certain protein structures that they all have in common, and the other is charge. They all have a negative charge on them. So there's various ways of targeting just pathogens in the body and not hurting the beneficial microbes in the body. This is one of them. And I'm gonna tell you, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. You know, it used to be, when I was, years ago when I was not aware of this stuff and I was working in the corporate world, I'd usually have to take a week of my vacation time to heal up from a, a flu bug. And this is like 30 years ago. And this stuff, you know, now I, I don't get flus, but if I get a biowarfare agent or something in my body, usually within 36 hours or so, I'm good. If I get a really, really nasty one and I'm so violently ill that I can't hold this stuff in my stomach, I have solutions for that now as well. But I, I got one biowarfare bug, I mean, it was so nasty, I couldn't walk for a week and I was laid up in bed around the clock, just in intense pain. So some of these can be very virulent. But this is, is a, just a magic bullet if you, can, if you can hold it in your stomach. If you get so sick that you can't hold it in your stomach, there are other things that you can do. And it's ridiculously cheap too. A six month supply of this stuff is like 25 bucks. I, I prefer the chlorine dioxide solution over what is being called Miracle Mineral Solution or Miracle Mineral Supplement. Uh, CDS tastes a lot better than the MMS. Uh, and it's pre-mixed, so you don't have to mix it. The other one you have to mix, and you have to make, you have to be very careful with the dosages and things like that. The CDS, you shoot it into a glass of lemonade, sweet with stevia, you drink it down, and you're good to go. 
I always take this stuff when I travel. I have a first aid kit that I always carry with me wherever I go in case I encounter radioactivity or pathogens or whatever. And the moment that I start getting a sore throat or anything, feeling a little bit tired, I start hitting with this and a few other things and it never happens. I don't have time to talk about GC math. But I, I don't recommend it. It's very expensive and it doesn't work that well compared to other things. Okay, <clears throat> so this is another one from restandrepair.com, microblast. This one I'll just tell you, you can put it on soil and use it for agriculture. You can mix it with water and use it for agriculture. Uh, but it also now is being sold as a parasite cleanse. And so it's a very effective at breaking down pathogens and parasites in the body by their protein structure. Now, marijuana. Nobody wants to call it marijuana anymore. It's like MTC, CBD, you know, got all these, man, when I was back in the day, we used to eat this stuff, we just called it pot. <laughs> now everybody's worried about what you call it because of the FDA, but uh, it's still as good as it ever was. Uh, and these two particular brands I've used and I like them and I recommend them. They're very good at healing all kinds of stuff, including removing radiation from the body. Uh, Holden's Hope Hemp Paste at hemppaste.com and Charlotte's Web Botanicals. They both have different effects. The, I think the hemp paste is a lot stronger, which not, isn't necessarily a good thing if you're trying to work. Because uh, I you know, I started out with the Charlotte's Web stuff and I was taking it while I worked and I felt great, you know, and it was really, just gave me energy and, and did a lot of things. And then I took the hemp paste and uh, it really mellowed me out. It reminded me of back in the old days. <laughs> I did a lot. I was what you'd call a volumetric drinker in college and in high school. I actually got into pot in junior high school, so I was like a volumetric smoker in, in junior high and high school and then a volumetric drinker in, in uh, college. So I did a lot of this stuff. I had a friend who was a smuggler, so I could have all the pot I wanted, which was great, I have to tell you. And so, you know, I've done a little bit of this stuff. And so I ate some of the, the hemp paste and... Uh, you know, it mellowed me out. I kind of like I said, I felt like the old days. Like, well, this is great, but you know, I got to work. And then the next day, I took a double dose of it, and I pretty much didn't care about work at all. <laughs> but it is some good stuff for healing. And also, the FDA has got a new commissioner, and they are probably going to start cracking down on this stuff. So I would say, snag some while you can. It may not be available for long. Ah, uh, now. As I mentioned, if you get so sick that you can't take in um, the MMS, there are things that you can do that will kill these pathogens and get you well enough uh, that you can, you can take them and get better, or at least get up to the point where you can take the MMS or CDS. And uh, silver is one of my favorites. It, it's, it tastes like water. It doesn't upset the stomach at all. This is what saved me when I got my first BioWarefare bug. It seems like... Spirit always sends me the really nasty ones first, so I get really, really sick, and then I have to like really, really work hard to figure out how to deal with it. And then later I get it again, and it's like, well, it's not so bad. But this is a really good one. I like accelerated silver on the left. I found it's a lot better than other silvers on the market that I've used, and um, I'll probably start selling it soon because it's, I've just had phenomenal results with it. All these things I'm recommending, by the way, I don't like read stuff on the internet and then go recommending them. I test everything on myself and my family and my friends and clients for months before I ever, and I do good old fashioned lab tests and skew analysis and things like that. So I know this stuff works. I'm not, you know, just reading stuff and regurgitating it. Uh, Dr. Mercola, who's a friend and a neighbor of mine, uh, he's got a silver solution. It's nano silver. Uh, and by the way, and his is good. He's got a good one. And by the way, some people were asking me about, you know, colloidal versus ionic versus nano silver and all this stuff. You cannot go by whatever they're calling it. What you have to go by is the particle size of the silver. Because whatever they're calling it, they may be inaccurate. You want angstrom or monoatomic silver. And what that means is angstrom silver or any kind of a, an ionic or colloidal solution. Angstrom is when you've got just a few atoms of the metal in one particle, like a dozen or less particles in one, uh, excuse me, atoms in one particle. That's angstrom. When you've got individual atoms in a particle, those are monoatomic, and they're the most healing and the most powerful. So Mercola's got a good one. Uh, now another thing, this is really good. If you get a pathogenic infection, 
one of the things that they like to do, microbes are very, very smart. They're way smarter than we give them credit for. They actually talk to each other using skater waves and radio waves and different kinds of biochemical markers and things. But they communicate with each other, and uh, they plot and plan against you. So they will grow and grow and grow in your body, but they won't attack until your immune system gets weak and you're vulnerable. Uh, and scientists are studying this. It's not like some new age woo-woo nonsense. Uh, scientists, if you want to Google this, uh, Google quorum sensing, Q-U-O-R-U-M, quorum sensing. And you can see what scientists are saying about how these microbes talk to each other. So they just sit there and eat, and they grow, and they grow, and grow, and then they attack your ass when you're not eating right or when you get sick. So while you're sleeping, they're growing and regrouping. They're like, oh, man, he's not hitting us with that stuff now. We can grow some more. Well, so you can do something about that. While you're sleeping, before you go to bed, you take a few capsules of this oxy powder intestinal cleanse, and it will flood the GI tract with oxygen, and that will knock these pathogens down while you're sleeping. So you'll get better much faster by doing this. Another thing you can use is a, a Bob Beck type parasite zapper. Now, I found that the Bob Beck style worked better than uh, Holda Clark's version, and so I, I prefer them. Worldwithoutparasites.com, you can get one from Don Croft, and he, he has good, pretty good ones. They're about 130 bucks. You, it, basically, those little copper plates there, you put that side up against your body, and you can ace bandage it on or tuck it between your pants and your abdomen, and it puts out a square wave frequency that you don't feel, unless you're really toxic, you might feel a little bit of a stinging, but that will kill pathogens. They really hate it. Now, another thing you want to do is to crowd out these bugs with probiotics. And so I sell various probiotics on my website, but you can also, I teach people how to make your own. And uh, there's a product from a Japanese professor named Tiro Ahiga called Effective Microorganisms, which I'll get into a little bit more in a moment. But you can actually take that and mix it with molasses and water, and you can make gallons and gallons of this stuff yourself. So for like 25 bucks, you can buy a quart of this stuff, you spend 10 bucks on a quart of organic molasses, Throw it in five gallons of water, and in three weeks, you got five gallons of probiotic, and you can guzzle it like it's going out of style. <laughs> now, as I mentioned previously, the, the QXCI Skio, it's a quantum device. Uh, the newer version of this is called the Indigo. This is the device that can identify a lot of these biowarfare bugs uh, and a lot of other things. It's really unreal. And it's because this scalar energy, what scientists are calling scalar energy, it is consciousness. It is the energy of consciousness. The stuff that we see flying out of the centers of galaxies, which I'm going to show you in a moment, that come to us, the stuff that's going, that's passing through everything, it's really God consciousness is what it is. And so <clears throat> this device, you know, when you look at matter, all the elements on the periodic chart, they vibrate it at different rates. You know, a hydrogen atom has a specific vibrational frequency at its subatomic level. Oxygen has a certain vibrational frequency, frequency at the subatomic level. And again, this is conventional physics. This is nothing, you know, advanced at all or unusual. Scientists know that the subatomic particles of these elements vibrate at certain frequencies. So, for example, if you know the frequency of hydrogen and you know the frequency of oxygen and you put two hydrogens together on oxygen, it's going to have an overall frequency and you can measure it and identify it as water. So this is the basis of this machine. It looks at the subatomic vibrational frequency of everything in your body, and it can identify them based on what it's looking at. And it can tell if you've got toxins or heavy metals or biowarfare agents or emotional issues with your parents. It can actually it can see cellular memory of stuff because it's stored in consciousness. And it's also stored chemically. It's stored in various ways. It's stored energetically in the body. And it has a vibrational signature that this thing can pick up. It can even pick up ghosts in the room, believe it or not, because they are discarnate entities or other kinds of non-physical entities, they are just organisms that are operating outside of our three-dimensional vibrational range. So it's a really amazing device, and this is how I can identify a lot of these things with some other testing, but this is the cheap way to do it. It's like typically 150, 200 bucks for a two, three hour session with one of these machines. It's unreal what it can pick up. Now, so we, <clears throat> we know how to get this stuff out of the body. I prefer for it to never come down in my environment to begin with. So when the Fukushima disaster happened, first thing I was thinking of, hmm, I wonder if this was engineered. Because I've worked with free energy and I see how things really work behind the scenes. And so I went and Googled 
Fukushima skater weapon. And one of the first things that came up was the Secretary of Finance of Japan stating on record, being interviewed by the, the um, editor-in-chief of Forbes, China, and he was saying that the United States had used a skater weapon to create the Fukushima earthquake that damaged the reactors. And he said that this was not the first time that the United States had done it two times before in order to blackmail Japan into economic policies against China to prevent China from, from their currency becoming the world's reserve currency. Now, for those of you that don't know what a reserve currency is, that is the currency that countries use to do business between themselves. And right now, for most of the planet, that is the US dollar. So the moment that the US dollar is no longer the reserve currency of the world, we're toast. Because we can just print up monopoly money and go buy stuff. Other countries actually have to have real resources and trade their currencies in order to buy what they want to get. So the United States seriously doesn't want the dollar to no longer be the reserve currency. And they were willing to kill for it. And apparently, that's what happened, according to the Minister of Finance. So that didn't surprise me. I said, OK, I've seen this kind of stuff before. What can we do about it? So then I started Googling to see if anybody was using, if you can use scalar energy as a weapon, why not use it for healing? So I checked to see if there was anybody using it to clear neutralize radioactivity. And in fact, I found that there were. And as it turns out, I had a big piece of that technology. Already, I was already selling it. But before we get to that, as I mentioned, those effective microorganisms from Tirohiga, this is how you can get it out of your yard and off your soil and off your plants. So if you're growing food outdoors, you can grow food with no radioactive fallout on it or other toxins. This, this stuff, microbes eat toxins and break them down into non-toxic elements. They're nature's nanotech. They're nature's garbage collectors. That's what they do. Funguses, molds, mildews, and bacteria, they are designed to break toxins down and turn them into non-toxic elements. So they're not bad. They're actually good. It's just that when we get an overabundance of pathogenic ones, that we have problems. If we didn't have such a toxic world, we'd see far, far less um, pathogens. And of course, they're also being engineered now. So the effect of microorganisms, as I mentioned, you get a quart of it. You mix it with a quart of blackstrap molasses, organic. Throw it into a five-gallon bucket. You brew it just like beer. For any of you out there who brewed beer before, you let it sit for three weeks at 95 degrees. You put a heating pad under it, wrap it up in a blanket, and you've got five gallons of probiotic. Now, the cool thing is you can also throw in herbs, supplements, particularly crappy supplements that aren't very bioavailable. You can rot them down in this stuff, and it will make them 100% bioavailable. You can take rock powders. And what kind of rock powders do we want to use? Volcanic rock powders. They're high in ormus. And when you ferment them, the microbes will eat the rocks, and it will make the ormus in the rock powders bioavailable. What's Shungite? Shungite is fantastic. Uh, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> you can take a skinny brew bucket and a fat brew bucket and pour about an inch or two of shungite or um, magnetite sand in the bottom of the big bucket put your brew bucket inside of that, and then fill the gap in between them with shungite or magnetite, and that will create a skater field around your ferment, and you'll get far better results with higher, far higher nutrient levels and a lot more ormus. Uh, this is some of the stuff that I teach in workshops and webinars and things, and also you can download the basic instructions on how to do this from that downloads link. This is a Japanese farmer in Fukushima, and you can see this on the Radiation Links page on my website, who has, ze he is in Fukushima City growing produce for Japan, zero detectable radiation on his soil and his crops, and all he's using is these dirt cheap microbes, he's spraying them on everything, neutralizing completely. So you can see him talking about that on YouTube. Now, I've mentioned this concept of scalar energy, also known as Orgone, tachyon energy, chi, prana, torsion fields, torsion waves. There are a lot of different names for this stuff. It's just superluminal light. It's God consciousness. It's flowing from the centers of galaxies. Conventional scientists, this is on phys.org. It's a very mainstream physics journal. Scientists have measured these huge amounts of the superluminal light zipping out of the centers of galaxies. And of course, they don't understand it. but. I equate it to God consciousness because it has an intelligence behind it and it flows through the whole cosmos and it's coming to us. It's relayed from the large suns at the, centers of the, at the center of the galaxy outward. 
Now we've been taught a lot of nonsense in our schools about the structure of the universe and the structure of our solar system. So we're led to believe that the that our galaxy is this big pancake of stars and planets and, and various things. But in fact, it's a donut shape. It's a toroid shape. And so this scalar energy comes flowing out of the centers of, of the galaxy or the center of the galaxy and it's relayed from the large suns at the center of the galaxy outward from sun to sun to sun to sun until it gets to us. And this energy as it flows, it's vortexing, it's spiraling, and it's branching. So it's, it's vortexing and it's branching or fractaling, as scientists would say. So this whole universe energetically is structured as a giant fractal vortex. So the energy gets to us, it's coming down to us from our sun this energy also is relayed from, by planets because it's been discovered, if you study the work of Nassim, Nassim Harriman and others, suns and planets, they've discovered now, have singularities at the centers of them. They have these black hole, white hole combinations at their center and they act as the, it, these interdimensional portals that allow this God consciousness to be relayed from the center of the universe outward. So there's this giant circuit. The whole universe is a giant skater wave circuit and this energy is being relayed to us. So it's coming from our sun, it's coming up from the center of the earth because there's a singularity at the center of the earth. And then we, we're also, as above, so below, we have a web of black holes throughout our body. We take this energy in and then we broadcast it out into a field around us. Now these fields around a galaxy are toroidal shaped, as I mentioned, or donut shaped. The energy flows out of one side of the toroid, it's spiraling around, and it goes back in the other side. And at the center, there's a, a black hole or a black hole, white hole combination, a singularity. That same pattern is also around planets. As we've seen, the magnetic field of the Earth is toroidal. It's also the same field shape of a solar system. It's also the same field shape of human beings. It's also the same field shape from a cell. It's also the same field shape of an atom and of molecules and of subatomic particles ad infinitum, as above, so below. This whole energy flow throughout the cosmos is this recursive pattern of spiraling, fractaling energy. And it slows down and coagulates into the matter and energy that we see and measure in our 3D reality. As I mentioned, the sun, you know, our solar system, we're taught that the sun's sitting here in the middle of our solar system and the planets are rotating around it in a plane. Well, that's not at all how it's really happening. Everything in the cosmos is in motion and it's all spiraling. Everything in the cosmos is spiraling. So our sun is spiraling through the galaxy and the planets are trailing behind it, spiraling behind it. They're not sitting in a flat plane rotating around and stationary in space. That's, by the way, what's responsible for all the polarities that we see in our universe. Hot and cold, light and dark, male and female, plus and minus charge, uh, everything. Oscillation of waves, all these different things be are because of this, this motion. Now, as I mentioned, this energy that's spiraling through the galaxy, it's branching, it's fractaling, and that's when, when it slows down and coagulates into matter, that's when you see these fractal patterns like trees or our bodies. Our bodies themselves are a fractal. Our nervous system, our blood system, they're all fractals. The chakras in the body. As I mentioned, the human body is a web of black holes. These black holes correspond to the acupuncture meridians and the chakras. The acupuncture meridians are simply junctures of these superconducting minerals all along the nervous system and in the brain neural pathways and in the DNA and along the spine. The DNA is actually a superconducting antenna loaded up with these superconducting ormus minerals. So do you think if you ingest ormus minerals in their natural forms, in food and in water, that it's going to help you out a little bit? Of course it will. It's going to jack up the superconductivity in the DNA, which is where the mind meets the physical body. Consciousness, if there is a mind-body connection, then consciousness has to meet the physical body somewhere. This is where it meets. It meets in these superconducting monoatomic elements within the body. They are antennas for consciousness. So the DNA is the interface. The nervous system is the interface. The brain neural pathways with these minerals are the interface where consciousness meets the physical structures. The chakras, by the way, which are you know, normally portrayed as these spiraling, spinning vortexes coming out of the spine, they're just large junctures of these superconducting minerals along the spine. And that's how the energy flows. 
your brain is a skater wave transceiver that picks up this God consciousness coming from the sun, coming from the cosmos, coming from the center of the earth, and it sends it down the nervous system and it rebroadcasts it out into a localized skater field, and that's why you've got a toroidal field around you. That's how consciousness creates reality, and that's how we're all connected. We're all part of this giant scalar energy circuit. Now, crystals have these superconducting elements in them as well, and you can use them for various practical purposes to clear this stuff out of your environment, out of your body, and out of the sky. When you see energy workers using crystals, holding crystals and doing things like Reiki with crystals, what they're doing is using that crystal as a frequency modulator because crystals, because of their structure, different kinds of crystals have specific frequencies built into them. So human consciousness can create these scalar energy which can alter matter and so you can have somebody working on you and part of the healing process is actually altering the matter in your body and restructuring it. And if you need a specific frequency for a specific type of healing, you can hold a crystal and send your energy through the crystal and it will modulate it into a different frequency for a different purpose. We're going to skip the Schumann resonance, but there is a pulsing in the Earth's atmosphere known as the Schumann resonance that pulses at 7.83 cycles per second. And the human brain and nervous system and body and all the cells in it entrain with that pulsing. It's like a mother's heartbeat slowing us down and getting us into deep sleep states at night and relaxing us. And I developed technologies that will do that. The Schumann resonance on Earth is accelerated to about double of what it is, uh, what it originally was, and it's stressing every living organism at a very subtle level. So I create devices that put out the original Schumann resonance, scale field, and when you're immersed in it, the body heals, accelerates healing, it de-stresses, you get into deep sleep states, meditation is improved, plants grow faster, they produce more, microbes and ferments produce more, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the ancients observed this stuff all around them in nature, and they noticed that the, the energy inside of an egg is very conducive to the growth and development of a fetus. And it makes sense because an egg is composed of bone, and bone, if it's well nutrified, is high in these monoatomic elements. So this God consciousness flowing down from, this earth, from the sun and up from the center of the earth, this shell, which is high in superconducting elements, picks up those scalar waves and concentrates. It concentrates that life force into the center of that egg, which makes it very conducive for a living organism that's growing. The ancients noticed this, and they created vessels like amphoras and kimchi pots made out of high ormus clay that picks up these scalar waves and directs it inside the vessel. These waves can structure water and make it much more healing. And also fermentation, when you've got fermentation going on, it makes the microbes happier so they produce more and more quickly. Now, some of you might be familiar with biodynamic farming. Rudolf Steiner uh, was listening to Madame, a woman named Madame Blavatsky who channeled a lot of information about this stuff, and he developed a farming method for homeopathically healing soil and the earth. And he recognized in the early 1900s that chemical farming was destroying the earth and eventually we wouldn't have enough, enough mulch to go around to heal it. So he developed these homeopathic methods for healing soil. And this is part of that uh, technology. These are cow horns arranged in a circle. Now cow horn is a Fibonacci curved vortex shape and it's made out of high hormus material. So when you send scalar waves through it, it concentrates the scalar waves in its interior. So if you've got this energy coming from the center of the earth and from the sun, it's gonna concentrate that life force inside the horn. So Steiner stuffs these horns with cow poop, which is a probiotic that's high in minerals, buries them in the ground for a year, the earth goes through the full astrological cycle or astronomical cycle, and all these different scalar waves coming from all the different planets and suns in the cosmos, they get to impart their frequencies from all these various angles through the course of a year, and it programs it into that cow poop. And after a year, the probiotics have eaten everything, and you wind up with a homeopathic solution that you can then put into water, and you can percuss it and vortex it, and you can spread it on large amounts of land, and you can heal the land energetically, and it works. Also in this arrangement, this is creating a skater wave vortex just by capturing the energy coming from the sun and the earth and creating a vortex there. The ancients noticed this coming off of volcanic mountains. Volcanic mountains are giant, uh, they're shockers of the earth. 
they're giant scalar wave antennas that pick this energy up coming from the sun of the earth and they rebroadcast it out into a vortex coming off the tips of the mountain and a localized toroidal field. These uh, lenticular clouds that you see sometimes, uh, those are created by the scalar waves passing through the clouds and slicing them up into these disks. So when you see that, you know that you're around healthy energy. The ancients observed this. They started making their own artificial mountains. That's what pyramids are. They're scalar wave antennas. They pick this energy up coming from the center of the earth and from the sun, they rebroadcast it out into a localized toroidal field, and they also send a vortex of energy up through the tip that can do interesting things like clear chemtrail pollutants out of the atmosphere. The ancients noticed this stuff as well. They made their houses look like these devices, TPs, for example, to skate away of antenna. It's made out of non-conducting materials. Metals act as waveguides for skater waves. Non-conductors act as antennas. They pick it up. This is a Tibetan stupa. This is, people meditate around these or inside of them. This is what it is. It's a skater wave antenna. They have very specific proportions for the part above ground and parts below ground. Celtic round tower, same thing. These are skater wave antennas. There's a man named Philip Callahan that wrote books. There's one called Paramagnetism about this technology and these phenomena. Of course, archaeologists come up with all kinds of ridiculous explanations for these things. But in the areas where these things are at, the plants and animals grow bigger and healthier for many miles around. And it's because this stone is made out of high ormus volcanic stone. You've got a skater wave antenna that goes a certain amount of depth down into the ground. It grounds these skater frequencies into the soil the microbes are happier, they eat more minerals, the minerals are uptaken by the plants, you get stronger and healthier plants with more ormus in them, the animals eat them. The whole ecosystem is enhanced simply by bringing this God consciousness into the soil. Our religious, various religious um, beliefs include this. This is a scalar wave antenna outside of Mecca uh, where they have uh, ceremonies where they, as I mentioned, human, human beings are scalar wave antenna. We create, we take this energy, we create it, we rebroadcast it. You get into a large circle in ceremony and you can create a gigantic skater wave vortex, which by the way, a lot of non-physical entities will feed off of. Hence the institutionalization and in things like churches and cathedrals. Sermon on the Mount. This is actually, an, this is not the Sermon on the Mount, but this is a, a gathering at a mountain with an obelisk on top. This is creating a big, massive skater wave vortex of human energy. Non-physicals know about this stuff. They feed off of it. And extraterrestrial interdimensionals have actually uh, worked with humans on this planet to institutionalize this in various ways, in geomancy, in cathedrals, in churches. These spires send off these vortexes, and non-physicals can hang out and feed off of our energy. This is part of what's going on on this planet. Again, if you understand how to conduct and direct skater waves, this is a perfect way of doing it. High Ormus stone. St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. Washington Monument. The Eiffel Tower in France. The Vatican. Man, this is one massive scalar circuit here. These columns will capture and amplify skater waves and then what does it do? It sends it up through a spire. This is a big feeding ground for interdimensionals. And I've had ET contact, and one of the things these ETs told me was that the, uh, they, one thing they told me is the Pope smokes dope. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But they also do ceremonies in these copulas, and they generate these vortexes, and they, you know, or when they have these large gatherings, you're creating a gigantic human skater wave vortex that these interdimensionals can feed off of. So it's part of the, it's part of the way that they keep their power and, and, and knowledge. They're given all this power and knowledge by these extraterrestrials, these interdimensionals, so that they can maintain their power and control. And in exchange, they set up these institutions and structures to feed these interdimensionals, our energy. You have to understand, scalar energy, it can create matter. It can create electricity. It can be converted from one form to another. It's, it's the fabric of the universe. These extraterrestrials and interdimensionals know this. Washington, D.C. Burning Man. Now, I don't know if somebody that figured out you know, what they were doing, if they really knew what they were doing, but they created this giant vortex. 
hopefully of a positive vibration. Our illustrious government has done the same thing, but of course, with the level of consciousness that they have, they create things like harp antennas for structuring and modifying weather, suppressing consciousness, creating earthquakes, et cetera, et cetera. When you see these longitudinal waveforms in the atmosphere, when they pass through clouds, you get these classic signatures. So if you're arriving through an area and you see this pattern in the clouds, this is not normally, uh, this is not usually a normal weather pattern. It can be, but not for vast, vast distances. This is a classic longitudinal wave signature in the clouds. Now this is my backyard several years ago and it was really ticking me off because I knew what was going on. You get these fractal patterns because this energy flows in these spiral fractal patterns. When it passes through the clouds very often you'll also get these fractal patterns. So the clouds look like snowflakes instead of normal puffy white clouds. And if you can see this closely up, you can see there are chemtrail patterns and things in this. It really ticked me off. But instead of getting into victimhood, I started looking. I figured somebody on this planet knows how to fix this. I started looking around and it turns out I was already making stuff that would fix it. This is a, an aerial view of these skater wave patterns. Okay, so solutions. There is a Russian physicist named Alexander Golod who, when the Cold War cooled down a little bit, or eased up a little bit, I should say, he had a multi-million dollar year budget and he was, I don't know if he decided to do this himself or if the military asked him to, but he started studying pyramids and he had a multi-million dollar budget so he started making all kinds of pyramids including this very large one outside of Moscow, 140, 144 feet high and uh, it's made completely out of fiberglass and wood and glue. And he discovered some very interesting things about this. One, that it would clear the atmosphere of pollution for a very large area. This one right here, about a 350 kilometer diameter, it will clear all the pollution out of the atmosphere. And it doesn't drop it down on the earth, it sends it out into space. He also discovered, this is the inside of it, he also discovered that it would neutralize radioactivity in the atmosphere and in the ground, in groundwater and in soil, for very large areas. These are people inside sitting around these these large uh, crystal spheres that they've got in there getting healed of diseases. People that go in these things very often get healed of major diseases. A lot of really interesting properties of this stuff. This is the inside, completely made out of glass. Now, as you can see, this is a curling photograph of a pyramid, and you can see the skater vortex coming off of these things looks like a double helix of DNA. There's a reason why our, our DNA looks like a double helix. It's because it is the solidification of the flow of this spiraling vortexing energy. Now, some of the benefits of Golod's pyramid were quite interesting, and we don't have time to cover them all, but the more interesting ones, it, as I mentioned, it will reduce radioactivity. It'll, reduce, it'll neutralize poisons placed inside of it. It improves the immune systems of living organisms. It accelerates cellular regeneration, improves seeds, growth, crop growth, balances the weather because it pulls the pollutants out of the atmosphere. It normalizes the ionization of the atmosphere. And when you have normal ionization of the atmosphere, there's no reason for the earth to have to clean itself. When you get severe weather of any kind, whether it's tornadoes or hurricanes or severe lightning or winds, that is the earth trying to clean itself because it's got a massive charge imbalance. So if you balance that charge, you automatically get normal weather for your area. And a lot of people don't even know what normal weather is for their area. I will tell you this. Some people that I know put some devices out around Florida and we haven't had any hurricanes since 2005. And last summer we had a hurricane and a tropical storm that came up from Cuba and when they got about 100 miles out of Miami, they just fell apart. So, one of the more interesting things, and this really gave me hope for humanity, that Golot discovered with his, his um, pyramid, in that large one, they noticed some flowers growing outside in the fields around the pyramid that no one had ever seen before. So he called a botanist in to identify them and discovered that they've been extinct on Earth for 11 million years. And he theorized that these pyramids' energy, because this energy creates 3D reality. This whole reality is created by this God consciousness, this scalar energy slowing down and turning into this, with us orchestrating it, all living organisms orchestrating it. He theorized that these pyramids would 
access the, the energetic pattern of these flowers or other extinct, possibly extinct organisms from the quantum field or the Akashic records, what do you want to, whatever you want to call it, and bring it back into physical 3D reality. So we've got a lot of a lot of solutions for all these ridiculous problems we have. There's solutions for all of them. There always will be. Now, there are a lot of other people that have these kinds of technologies. I don't have time to discuss them all. You, normally, I cover 61 patents worldwide for methods for neutralizing radioactivity, and I list all the patents. Those will be in these slides when you download them. You'll be able to see all 61 patents for neutralizing radioactivity, including eight of them in Japan. I got in contact with a J Japanese ambassador, and I said, hey, man, I know how to neutralize radioactivity. I've seen it done. And here's all these other people that have patents on how to do it, including eight in Japan. Never got a response. So anyway, this is Dr. Constantine Mile from Germany, who is one of the leading skater physicists, who not only has figured this stuff out and experimentally proven it and mathematically proven it, he also, for you geeks in the audience, he solved the unified field equation that Einstein and all his contemporaries were trying to figure out. They wanted one equation that would describe all matter and energy at every scale of the universe, from the galactic down to the subatomic. And Einstein and his buddies couldn't figure it out in his era. He figured it out, and uh, he wasn't awarded the Nobel Prize. He was attacked heavily for it. He's also the one who's responsible for those who are familiar with the expanding Earth theory. He's the one who figured that one out, too. So there's some of the patents for neutralizing radioactivity. Now, as I mentioned, I developed a technology for neutralizing this stuff in the atmosphere for a 75 mile radius. And uh, it turns out I was already manufacturing it. I just had to do some experiments. And I spent about a year and a half, hardly slept, hardly ate, and I finally figured it out. And I developed this device. But this is my backyard before I put this device out. You can see the fractal patterns. You can see these wispy, weird clouds. This is not normal cloud formations. These are not normal at all. You can see there are more fractal patterns and more snowflake patterns. You can see the chemtrails. This is what it looks like after I put them out. Normal puffy white clouds, blue sky, normal rainfall. As I mentioned, I'm not the only one responsible for this. And by the way, anybody in the audience who uh, is interested in killing me over this technology, I've already got about 45 people who have all of the details on this technology. I've set up a dead man's trigger. So if anything happens to me, if I get incarcerated or if I get killed, I've got friends in the media. I know Martin Luther King's family. I know a lot of famous people and who can get this out to mass media and disseminate it. But this stuff, uh, I'm intending to open source it. But uh, at any rate, we, and you can do this too. You know, you don't have to use my uh, version of this. Um, this is more of what it looks like. We have normal weather now, and we don't have hurricanes. Because we don't need them. They, the, when, you, you know, when you clean up the atmosphere, you don't need a hurricane to come through and clean things up. Now, I was driving back from Atlanta one day, and Atlanta was heavily, heavily chemtrailed. The whole area for 150 miles around was just white haze up in the atmosphere. And when I got back to about 75 miles out from my house, I saw this, and I thought it was really cool. And what you see in the foreground up in the sky is a lot of chemtrails and mist, the misty white clouds and the, you know, the chemtrail pollutants. And you get down a little bit farther and all of a sudden you see puffy white clouds and blue sky and normal weather. So this was the event horizon of this device that creates a giant vortex. And it, like I said, it doesn't drop this pollution down on the earth. It actually sends a vortex. It's like an upside down tornado that folds in on itself. And it, the apex of it is out in space. So it actually acts like a vacuum cleaner and it sucks this stuff out into space so it doesn't come back down on us. So therefore you can see the event horizon and there's a little bit closer view of it. And it's blatant, it's obvious. You know, when I fly in and out of places where people put these kinds of things in place, you can see, you know, it's, it's blatant. You don't see the brown haze. You know, when you fly and you see that brown haze in the atmosphere of pollution and all, you don't see that where these things are. You get a happy skies. <laughs> You can do this too. We don't have time, unfortunately, to discuss the details, but I will do classes on how to build your own devices, your own static skater wave devices that will do this. And you can do it really, really simply with little six inch pyramids like this. You don't have to have anything big and fancy. You can make little six inch organite pyramids. You put about, I discovered this because my, uh, one of my manufacturing guys was at my house and he put some of them out in the yard to cure. 
on my back patio, and I was out mowing grass, and I saw this big fat chemtrail being laid, and all of a sudden it started boiling and, and spiraling and flying apart. And I, and, I, and I got back to the house, and I saw this, and I thought, no, nah, it couldn't be. So I, I went, and, I, and there was this big hole in the sky, a clear sky, you know, and the rest was haze all around, about five-mile diameter. So I went back inside, and I got four, well, I got two more of them, stuck them out, and I waited about two hours, I came back out, and as far as I could see, the sky was clear. So I started driving around to see where the edge of it was, and it got about 35 miles out before I saw the edge of it. So then I put seven of them out and said, hey, you know, I'll just protect myself. And I forgot about it, and maybe a week later, my wife and I went to Disney World, which is about 75 miles away. And out in the distance at Disney World, I could see the edge of it. So you can do this really simply. It doesn't take a lot of high tech. This is just stuff from Home Depot and eBay. You can make your own. And I've been showing how to do this uh, for years. And I'll have some webinars, and I'm going to come out with DVDs on how to do this with all the specifics as well. Because in my experience, most of the people making Organite don't really understand the physics of it. So they could be making it stronger, a lot stronger. But uh, at any rate, there are some cool people. There's, this is on eBay. There's actually a person selling these on eBay. And, this is actually a proper construction that probably works really well. But if you're using metals, you have to understand how to use them as waveguides. So I highly recommend not using metals in your designs until you understand the physics of it. This is an old Doncroft style cloudbuster. These are expensive to make, and they're not that effective, in my opinion, compared to other things. So anyway, but just wanted to show you. OK? So that's it, folks. I thank you very much. I'll be out at my booth if anybody wants to talk.